Lemon Amiga Presents A Play Diet Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show Hi there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. In this one we'll be checking out The Clue, developed by Neo Software in Germany and published on the Compart label in 1994. This game originally came on four discs and it's the AGA version that we're looking at at the moment. It starts off in Southampton in 1994 and it starts off with a pretty depressing scene of a graveyard. Scene, we are introduced to our hero whose name is Matt and I think this scene is actually depicting his death and in this series of play guides I'll be concentrating more or less on the game rather than finding fun facts and figures and that kind of thing so you might find a very much stripped down play guide and I'll be trying to talk a little bit more normally not that that's easy when I'm trying to present a game like this but I don't really want to come across as arrogant in these play guides. This isn't the way to do it. This is just my demonstration. This is just a guide as to how you can do it if you want to attack this game. And this game is pretty deceptive and it's quite a good one if you can get into it. Which I'm not quite sure how many people manage to do. Because it's quite an interesting game wrapped up in a point and click adventure. see the screen ripper is slightly being affected by the auto scaling I've got it on at the moment and that just makes everything full screen and as you can see it's the clue AGA version so we can continue an old game or we can start a new one so for this this is the first time I've ever seen this this was played in 2016 which is a couple of years ago now and this is the very first time I've played it or loaded it up so from the very first screen we can check out us we are 41 years old and we are known as matt stuvisant and we've just got off on a train which has landed at dover and it's taken us all the way up to victoria station in london where we can begin our adventure and we don't have a single penny at the moment but we do know our name and we do know one or two things about us you can see on the station we can see some nice animation we can see the time and we also have a number of options as well which we can use to check ourselves out and to talk to people and to investigate what we're supposed to be doing in the game and so if we look at the surroundings we can see we're in london's most famous train station the gateway to paradise this is the time at the bottom and the date you can see 3rd of the 2nd 3rd of february 1953 so that's quite some time ago and there are some rpg elements in this game not that you'd believe it there are tons of them you can see our state of health is quite healthy and our stats will go up and down as the game continues hopefully we don't have to pump iron like grand theft auto but we will gain experience points and nerve levels and greed and that kind of thing and of course we can level up different skills like locks and safes and electronics as we shall hopefully find out a bit later on and at the moment we don't have any tools we don't have any loot we don't have any money whatsoever we've just got off that train station so all we can do is call a taxi and that is one of the easiest ways to get around town because we haven't got a car at the moment 
and the beginning of every single game this guy will say congratulations you've now got a billion dollars and you just want a free ticket so here we go this is our free ride in a taxi and you don't actually get a billion dollars you're certainly perhaps a highly rated customer but we are still skint at the moment we still need to book ourselves into the hotel here on holland street and we find a guy hanging around outside holland street his name's frank and he could help us in this situation By asking him questions, we can figure out what this guy is up to, and he's a general dog's body. In this case, it's good because he can drive a car, and at this point, we can't drive a car, so it's good to have him around, even though he wants 90% of our income. So we can employ this guy, but he will take 90% of anything that we acquire in the game. So the first point of call is to walk into the hotel of all the locations that you can find on this street and in the hotel we can investigate the manager and ask him a number of questions none of which are important to the game at this stage That means that we've blown it and that means that we can no longer play this game at all because we've just answered the wrong question in that hotel. And if we say that we'd like to book a room, they'll find out that we're broke and that means that when we go back in there, he'll accuse us of being broke and that means that we no longer can complete the game. The only opportunity is to quit and try again and yes i am skipping forward in the footage because i did hang around for quite some time trying to get back into that hotel but if you want to play the game let's try to play the game properly now and this is a combination of three or four different tries and edited together into this play guide and you can see that right from the goal everything is nice and colorful and i like the um, buildings on the bottom of the screen which show Tower Bridge and the Big Bang Tower and landmarks from London and I like the music even though it's pretty basic at this stage so let's just enroll Frank into our evil doings because we'll need to definitely use him a little bit later on and now that we've got his name and address and speciality we can now move hopefully into the hotel and this time, let's not say that we want to book a room, let's just say that we have a room reservation, and that should mean that we can hopefully get a room sorted in that hotel. And it's not apparent, but I think you don't give your real name when you're booking the real uh, hotel reservation. So what I like to do is choose um, a Goldberg name, and you'll see that when you're trying to book the room. So if you say, I'd like to book the room, I've booked a name in advance, you'll see Mark Goldberg. I'm not quite sure, but I think that that is the name that you're supposed to enter from the manual. And if you enter anything else, you'll probably get booted out, I'm not quite sure. But I couldn't find any mention of that name in the manual, so maybe you can enter any name at that point. And you can see now that we're now moving into our own room, and the ghost of ourselves reappears to tell us what we did do all those years ago, and we're supposed to retrace his steps and commit a number of crimes. And this way, it's great call upon mother, and our mother gives us the name and address of Mr. Briggs, and we will meet Mr. Briggs in 15 minutes out in the pub across the road. So it was worth phoning her, and that's a part of the story that you cannot skip, and you have to read these things in the clues to find out what's going on. But for the most part, it's fairly easy once you get a toehold in the game. You can see that we're supposed to meet him in 15 minutes time and if we wander anywhere else then the clock will jog forward a number of places i think it's 10 minutes or eight minutes depending on how long it takes you to get there 
And in this case, if we hop along down to the pub, he's hopefully still waiting to give us our first job. Let's see if we can pile on in there and find Mr. Briggs. Briggs is our first contact and our first contact will give us some money, it will give us our first car and also our first job which is breaking into a kiosk in Fulham. We're given 15 quid at this stage and it looks like a Fiat Topolino from 1940 it's unfortunately 13 years old and it's only got two seats in there which means we can only carry us and one more passenger it's on its last legs but it's a free ride so we're not going to turn it down at this stage and our ghost pops up and says yep yeah, he's a fat something or other and there are some language in this game so you can see mr briggs has given us the deal let's decide to use it and let's decide to get on with the bigger part of this game because this game is actually a breaking burglar simulator which is dressed up as a point and click adventure and when I first saw this game and I saw those screenshots I thought well this is obviously a point and click I'm not really interested in this it looks like something that I would absolutely not be into and then I played the game and I got some way into it and then I realised that the simulatory elements are the most interesting and it's the thing that most people really rave about when they talk about this game and so all we need to do is to go through a number of steps to commit a burglary and the first step is to go to our hotel room and in here we can plot out our crimes and this is our base and this is where we'll need to call people on the telephone and we can also organize our crimes because this is an organized crime simulator you can see we can also check out the credits of this game none of which i'll be mentioning in this review because again it takes months of research to do all that and this is going to be a very stripped down series focusing on the game itself so in this case we're going to use the phone and we're going to talk to the guy that we met on the street because he will hopefully help us and getting him on our side means that he gains confidence in us and he won't run away he won't tell the law and you have to get confidence in the guys first of all and i'll be showing you how to recruit more guys later on but he says well i want 90 percent there's just the two of us on this raid to raid the kiosk in Fulham and so 90% is what we start off with unless we can find some more guys but I'm not quite sure whether they'll join us with our lowly experience at this point because our experience is zero so well you can check out how many that they would uh, get if there was four guys but unfortunately there's only two guys in the car so let's get on with that conversation let's not interview him anymore and let's now well we can plan the raid if we really want to do that at this stage and that will tell us what we need it's the kiosk we've got a car it's licensed for two people we need to designate a driver we've got the escape route we've got the distance and my share is 100 percent at this point because we haven't recruited anybody into the plan you can see our name is printed on the left and we can then plan the burglary of which i'll be showing you a little bit later on and by clicking on accomplices we can select the accomplice which we've just recruited the one guy the one guy that was standing on the corner you can see our vital stats are also on that left hand side and there's a lookout i'm only 19 percent electronics 11 safe 7 and locks 15 and frank is a great lookout and he has seven percent cars which means he's great for looking out at the beginning and he can drive us away because we need him as the designated driver and so we have a number of options here and it's been two years since i've seen this footage so let's just see what we decide to do 
and we decided to think about the kiosk. And thinking about the kiosk in this particular stage does not appear to do anything. So at this point it's best to get on the mission by going into town and collecting the items that we need and that's the fiat car we shall see a little bit later on that we can buy different cars in the game and just like grand theft auto we can go around terrorizing the neighborhood and breaking into bigger and bigger buildings in the game but for now that's our mission plan we've got frank all sorted out so let's hopefully continue and it's difficult enough finding how to break out of this screen you may notice four little boys in the corner and four little boys means that you exit that screen it would have been easier just to say quit or leave or go back but it says four little boys and four little boys like me i'm going back out onto that street and i'm gonna call a cab because we have 15 pounds burning away in our back pocket and we need to spend that on the tools that we need for our first job and we can buy those from a number of different places depending on what it is and instead of that we're investigating the kiosk we can drive straight to the kiosk and investigate that and what that means is we can stalk it out we can lay siege to that place all day long and we can see who comes and who goes and it's important to stay here all day long for as long as it takes to scope out the entire area and that means that our percentage of accuracy will go up and once it's at a hundred percent which happens after all of this then that means that we're virtually safe and secure and we know the very best time to raid this kiosk so unfortunately this is the most boring part of the game and you can't skip it you can stop it by clicking the quit investigation but if you're not thorough enough you'll get caught and so sweaty hands in this case will get caught and that's game over so in this game you have to bear and grin it and grin and bear it over these sections and you can see that we've now got to eight o'clock in the morning so hopefully it won't be too long now before this investigation is complete And yes, 100% accuracy, that's absolutely terrific. That gets us all tooled up with the visual notes that we'll need. And you can see Aunt Emma's shop and the old people's home. That's another target that we can investigate. And we can investigate these in any particular order. And we can gather intel on all the different locations that we can raid in the game. But you can see I'm skipping out some of the footage and accuracy was only at 39%. In this case, we won't raid the old people's home because it's pretty tight on the old people. And at this point, I'd just like to say I do not condone organised crime, even in the smallest way. It is not fun, sexy or great to go around robbing people. And I've been broke into too many times and i've been terrorized out of my home so i do not recommend that this is an organized crime simulator and in organized crime these guys are insured to the hilt so if we break into somewhere hopefully they'll claim on the insurance and i'm just speeding up this footage because we are choosing to get the investigation done really early and that means that we get all the intel on all these different places so we can march from screen to screen that's 54% accuracy on that particular building, that's the pink villa. And we don't even have to go through these screens. In fact, I'll be choosing to skip a number of these targets altogether. So we can also go to the cars and the van shop if we want to do that. We can go back to the Victoria station. I'm not quite sure what that does. But our main part of call is going back to Holland Street. because I haven't even heard and played this game before I'm definitely going to keep Frank on my side by keep talking to him and by asking all these questions hopefully some kind of loyalty meter will go up 
And if we know some intel about him, hopefully we'll have dibs on him so that he won't be running off to the law and singing like some kind of canary. So let's plan again our raid. We've got Frank on our side. We still have to sort out the driver. We can sort out the driver by clicking on the drive button. And as Frank is the only one that can drive the car, he's selected. And as we do our first raid, he will upgrade his stats so he can at least drive it in a straight line. So that's the target, that's the kiosk. We've got the accomplices, we've designated the driver. So all we need to do now is to draw the plan. And the plan in this case is an overhead view where we can run around the vicinity and we can plan just what we're going to do when we get there. In this case, this isn't just for short, this is a crucial part of the game. And so before we even start that plan, we'll need a few tools and a few items. And for this, I'm going to go to Watling Street and spend the last of our 15 quid on some tools for that job. And of course, this being a burglary simulator, we'll have to get the bare essentials, in this case a pair of gloves, which is always handy. We can always get an all-purpose jemmy as well, which will get us through most situations at this early stage. And we can get an axe as well to break into those cabinets. At this stage, we don't really need a battery, and that comes with the electrical equipment a bit later on. And at this stage, we can't afford much. But this is where we buy and sell all our equipment, all our minor tools, and I think you can buy some pretty hefty tools which open up in that shop a bit later on as we get through the game. And you can see Walrus and Yellow Shades is actually a bar, a pub in the game. You can talk to various people here and they will join us in our quest through the game. And some of those are pretty dodgy characters and you can't find much out about them at this particular time so let's hopefully go back to the hotel and now that we have the equipment hopefully we'll have enough to get on with the mission and no we've gone to the car place instead from here we can check out the cars there's a great picture of Bogart in the background and here's looking at you kid this is a territory of the 1950s where people still had great respect for Humphrey Bogart. You can see this guy has an A to Z of cars. There are 10 cars available in the game, all of which cost a fortune. And right now we can't afford Zip. So we can talk to this guy and try and get him on our side. And once we get big in the community, we should be able to enroll this guy. And he should give us a few secondhand knockoffs, including the customary Jaguar. The E-Type Jag, which is in every single cop show known to mankind, based in London. And so it's great that all this information is in the game. And for stats nerd and facts nerds, then maybe you can cover a big plot. But really the major plot in this game is to steal the crown jewels from the Tower of London. And in this game you have to go through maybe 15, 20 different raids. And this is where we would star, store our own cars, had we got any own cars to trade. I'm not sure whether we can tool those up, but we can certainly upgrade our cars. But yes, the aim of the game is to get through a large number of missions, slowly but surely, until we get through to that Tower of London. And steal the Queen's jewels, which are actually nowhere near the Tower of London. They are fakes, as everybody knows. I think the crown jewels are stored somewhere in Scotland, but I'm not quite sure, and those could be fakes as well. But now that we've got everything under control, we're now heading back, all the way back to that hotel room to hopefully plan the raid, but not before, of course, we've tooled up and talked again to uh, a couple more people, and now hopefully we can plan and get ahead in this game. So the game is multi-layered and it seems complicated until you know what you're doing. And if I knew what I was doing all the way back when I was playing this game, I would be able to march through it much quicker. So you can see in this section, we can work out the plan. And the first thing we need to do is walk. And I think for this, I'm using the joystick, the trust the old zip stick and walking i think you can use the cursor keys or the keys on the keyboard I'm not quite sure 
we can see moving around with the mouse does nothing. And having walked somewhere, I think you press it to fire button or enter, and then you can choose to do something. In this case, I'm going to, uh, well, open that door, and opening that wooden door, in this case, reveals that it's locked. And that will add to the a list of things that we will do as we are planning this mission. So checking that door, he will actually check that door before he actually does anything with it. In this case, I've chosen to use the axe to break in. And every tool that we've got in the game will break in at a different speed and also at a different volume of sound as well. You want to be quiet if you want to get away with these burglaries, so... It might be best to choose the quickest and also the quietest equipment as you go along. So, as you can see, every time I try to open one of these doors, it will do that during the raid plan that we're doing at the moment, which will happen in real time. And we can see what's in there. It's jewellery in this case, and some cigars and some money. You might see an icon or an image of whatever it is and everything will be worth coin in this game. If you want to flog it for a bit of small change then it is possible to do that. And now let's go to the elephant in the room. Let's check out that cash register. And of course in the cash register there will be some money and it can be a little bit unwieldy to figure out this plotting of the mission screen. Uh, at first but eventually you get used to it and like I say once you're used to the game you can run through it at high speed and just get on with grabbing that loot so in this case more loot to be grabbed and I think there's a, a sideboard or some kind of side unit there that we can check out as well and it says loot kilograms three maybe we can only carry so much loot with us hopefully at this stage we can carry it so in this case there's nothing interesting to see around here, so maybe this wasn't a cabin after all. And so all we need to do now is hopefully walk out of here and then plan that raid. When we are ready, we can work out the plan that will demonstrate it on the screen. We will keep the plan, we can run the plan like this, and we can fast forward and draw back, and we can see our plan in action. But that isn't a burglary, this is just the demonstration. You can see the time ticking down, and that means that on later missions where time's critical, you will have to time yourself, and some plans will be lengthier than others. You don't want to stay in there too long and you want to get back to that vehicle when you're finished as well. And that means both people have to be in that vehicle. I'm not sure our driver at the point, at this point, is actually in there. And so let's bumble our way through. Let's keep that plan. Having done so, we can now start the burglary. And that means that the plan will act out in semi-real time. And we can choose which one to go for. So let's see what happens. raid you will try to get away from the law and if you are silent and quick then you'll be able to get away without a police chase and in a Morris or whatever it looks like it is a Fiat then you can bet that thing won't move very quickly but after each raid you'll get a breakdown of notoriety and it says that there is one record on our friend and the record on us that were traces left when walking and there were traces of identification but not enough to pin the job on us so that means that we've got through it scot-free and they haven't got any tabs on us which means it's back to that hotel room 
to plan another raid and I felt like Napoleon himself after a glorious victory and this guy is on top of the world having broke into a kiosk and we have a phone call well done and this sometimes unlocks new missions as well and there are as I say tons of missions in the game I haven't got very far with it but there are so many missions it will keep you going for a long time so now we can choose to do a number of things we can get some more recruits together we can investigate another property we can get some items we can sell our loot that we've just managed to get together or as i'm doing right now i'm trying to get some more intel on our friend and maybe i was thinking he'd lower his percentage you can still see it says 90 percent which is a huge car out but never mind we're going to go for that and we're going to hopefully plan that next mission and we have scoped out a number of places already so let's accept the driver of course because we'll definitely need that in our two person vehicle car and let's select Frank Maloya as the driver and so we can now plan hopefully the next port of call and in this case it's a bigger building and from here it's a more armored building as well we'll leave frank outside as the lookout man i'm not quite sure if it's possible to do much with him at this stage but i think you can swap characters just change person it says and you can swap characters and you can do things in real time let's select the jemmy because it only takes 16 seconds to break in and now that we've broke in we can investigate a number of doors if they were alarmed at this point, then they would have a red uh, border around them and they don't, so that means we're safe to break through. And you can see something on the wall that looks a bit like a mirror that's actually a painting and that's worth some money. So let's case the case of valuables and let's break in with the jemmy and we have to take whatever's in there, an article for daily use. So you might think that that's absolute lost property, but an article for daily use could be actually a wristwatch or something valuable. So we're going to pinch it. And remember, these guys are insured to the hilt. So as long as we get through these doors as quickly as possible, we can take down a number of things. And breaking down wooden doors at this stage isn't particularly hard. It's just that it takes some time to do it. And for this, I'm actually breaking into both doors at the same time. It's locked, so we're going to have to use an item to break that door down. And again, this isn't the actual plan that we're working out. So if we choose to run this plan, this guy will um, try to unlock both doors in this fashion in the actual game. You can see some steps, and I don't think it's possible to climb to the top of buildings. It could be completely wrong, but you can see on this particular stage there are steps so let's fast forward through this and you investigate in the mirror in this case it's a painting it's worth 80 quid so let's bag that and let's investigate this it's another painting so uh, it's possible to run around at lightning speed of course but this video is speeded up so that we can get on with the raid and this is perhaps the most interesting part to find out what all these things are worth and what all these cabinets contain there are a few jokes and red herrings as you'd imagine and so curiosity reveals some more items so at this stage you can see that this game isn't so much a point and click adventure even though you do quite a lot of pointing and clicking in the game the end of our jaunt and hopefully we can get ready and I think again the guy's too far away from the car I think we needed to switch characters and get the other guy into the car before we leave and this plan isn't quite finished it says and so that's one of the pitfalls of the game you need to make sure that both people are in that car but having corrected that let's just skip on to the actual burglary check that out
you can see I'm wasting a bit of time trying to break through these doors and you can see all the time lost. This is real time because the game plays out at this speed and it's great that it does that. And some of people have reacted to the escape car and so that means that we're going to have to run for it. It looks like we've managed to get through this, so that means that we are on to the next stage of the game. And before that, we can check out the RPG element, which obviously you have to keep as low as possible. And I'm not quite sure if it's even possible to get rid of notoriety once you've built that up. And knowing this type of game, it probably isn't, so it's probably best to take it easy at the start and to go around secretly and as quietly and as quickly as possible so here we go again back in that hotel room it's a different day it's a different month even we're now into april and we can check out what we've got and these are well we've got five pounds remaining because we didn't cash in any of our valuables you see the loyalty is right up there and the nerves aren't too bad maybe the nerves go up and maybe they go down as you lose your nerve and gain your nerve i'm not quite sure but you can see that we have some loot to the value of 170 pounds and that's i'm not quite sure how that's worked out but you can see we have got something to sell so hopefully after this we'll make our way down to the main street and there are at least three or four different places where we can sell our loot and those places will specialise in different things. The guys just around the corner from the hotel will specialise in small things for pickpockets, and the ones close to the main town will specialise in higher class items, vases and pictures and portraits, that kind of thing. So we've gone through to the local dealer or spiv or whatever they're known as, we've got a few paintings, and the local backstreet dealers will give us peanuts for these at this stage. Mostly because we are taking 90% from the driver and he gets the 90, we get the 10. But apart from that, I think our notoriety matters. I think our popularity matters and we aren't kingpin by a long way. And of course, these dealers will give us bottom dollar because they have to palm those off and get rid of the merch. So let's check out another guy this is another guy he will buy a different set of items from us and it looks like that he buys african equipment from the serengeti but he actually buys uh i think jewelry and that kind of thing but you can see nothing at the moment and everyday knickknacks could be in our possession we've got 106 pounds now from our community chest which we've robbed and we have got two burglaries under our belts so in this case i'm now going to walk on to the street and um, let's take a cab and let's see if we can get rid of the last of our goods in town In the pub is where we can pick up new recruits and I think that these are pretty random and we can't tell at this stage whether they have any special skills that we need but if we recruit those guys knowing that there's only two of us in the raid we'll find out when we get back to the HQ because when we're planning a raid if you remember it comes up with all stats on the left hand side so we can find out what they're good at in this case we need to find a good driver and so it's best to interview as many people as possible and try to get them on our side you can see this shop specializes in statues and vases and paintings and jewelry and furniture so do we have any of that to trade in well actually i don't have anything on offer so that was just a quick trip into that building and yes in the pub 
is the best place to find new recruits and it's best to always go back to your port of call, the main hotel at the end of every stint just to check out where you are and I guess that's the best place to save your progress as well in case you make any mistakes and if you get caught in any of these raids it's game over and you'll have to load these places all the way back up again so we've changed our location this time we're outside of Johnson's the Jewelers and this time we're investigating that and again we're sitting that out all the way to the end and this is going to be the last location that we're checking out in this play guide and this is just a guide to the game so this is slightly harder than the previous missions this will require some more tools and it will require some more work it's got burglar alarms in there and it will require perhaps even a different set of personnel so i'm interviewing this woman at the moment she's telling us that she's a housewife and that means she's got no former connections with the law by clicking on those accomplices we can check out what we're going to see from those people we've checked out the jewelers is the building that we're going to go for and according to this she's great in safes and explosives and i'm not too bad when it comes to safes and explosives well not quite sure when that comes in handy maybe there are different things to blow up in the game and that's also pretty loud so in this case schmidt the woman that we found is not really going to be very helpful and i'm probably going to choose frank again the guy that we picked up on the street corner and he's the lowest common denominator if you can find somebody better then that's even better for us and even though these guys will probably take a lower percentage so let's check out the tool shop now that we have a few more quid we can afford some more tools and these are unlocked as we go through that game you can see a glass cutter is unlocked an electric kit protective clothes and maybe that's for gas attacks there's a radio that we can communicate with our fellow man there's an angle grinder there's a lock breaker a rope ladder and a drill which is opened up lock pick hammer and all the small tools so we have a small fortune but we're gonna have to spend it wisely and so let's see what i decide to buy in this particular case the electric kit is only useful for alarms and this place has an alarm so maybe that would have been wise to get but in this case i'm going to go for the angle grinder it looks like which is a very heavy duty weapon tool in fact and that will grind its way through doors and through locks and the drilling winch i think that's called is something that i think holds drill in place and for that we're going to need a drill so we're going to use the drill for that and so now that we can drill into places pretty quietly we can use big old noisy angle grinder on the rest so that's us tooled up that's us ready to rock and roll and so in case i go into the pub at this point it doesn't look like we are hopefully we can get on with that mission and so this game had four discs and it has lots of missions to be going on with 10 different vehicles to drive around in and we work all the way through to the crown jewels themselves so this is a big game it's going to take you some time to get through it you need a respect for it and respect for this game comes gradually as you get through it and become a bigger and better burglar and that means having got the notoriety and all those rpg elements up to scratch then the, i found at least that i got a lot more enjoyment from this and it's a lot less seedy than it would be if such a game was created today and so i'm continuing to investigate this place just so i can get all my stats up there to 100 percent but in case we don't cover it later because this is the last joint we're going to raid i'm going to cover them scores and the highest score that i could find in this case came from the one amiga magazine which gave this 88 percent which is a great score 
And the Lemon Amiga crew gave this 83%, which is still way above average. Very good plus, I'd say. And Sue Amiga gave this 86%, which is somewhere in the middle. And Amiga Dream gave this 84. Amiga Format awarded the game 74%. Amiga Power gave the clue 60% saying the best parts of the game are buried inside the point and click adventure tediumness and Amiga Concept gave this 47% virtually for the same reason and I can definitely see where they're coming from this can be a bit of a Marmite game if you like point and click adventures but you like breaking and entering and escaping from the law with RPG elements then this game's perhaps for you and I haven't seen a game like this at all on any other platforms, so it's kind of unique and it tries to be a master of all, but really when you are actually sat there investigating these places and this is played out in real time, I'm guessing at the time that I need to quit, which is almost 8 o'clock in the morning, which means we've investigated the night and it's given me 100% accuracy. So it is possible to skip through these things and plan your raid if you know what you're doing you can just go nip into town hire some people get some tools and get on with it and then you can see this first time i'm bumbling my way through it and i'm just about getting to grips with this so i'm pretty happy with my progress i like the atmosphere i think it's not particularly 1950s rock and roll but the scanty music on offer is quite well done and you can see we're having trouble with the driver in this particular case because Schmidt of course doesn't drive so we can't select her as the driver but having got through those little bits of details it is possible to understand the game and then having done that it's pretty easy and again the only thing that stumped me is four little boys which kicks us out of this screen so hopefully I will eventually get around to Selecting our usual driver and that will mean that we can continue on this mission and The scores well, I think the average score is around 8 out of 10 for this and I think it's a great game. It's not one that I ever played back in the day um, I got to see this in 2012 and I think I was just playing around in the Lemon of Vega database just looking around looking for games and I saw the screenshots and Back in 2016, I was thinking about long games that I wanted to cover for this long play guide season. And I get people saying that I speak too much in my reviews and they're way too long, they need to be 10 minutes. So I don't really want to feel bad or come across bad, but this season there it's got me talking through it and it's got quite long reviews as well, which are the average of 45 minutes. And this one was about three hours of footage that I've edited down to about an hour. So I hope it's not too boring. And I hope by going through these menus you can see what I'm doing, recruiting these guys. And you can see, wow, it's just that easy. And really, there are only a few locations in the game that you need to memorise. It's not massive. And so the point and click element is deceptively small. And everything else is done to some kind of degree. But I wouldn't say this game is massive and it looks like we're choosing to walk into the police station and we can interview the police constable I think that we don't have any notoriety so there won't give us any hassle at this point but let's skip on let's go back to that hotel room and let's plan the raid hopefully on that jeweler shop before we call it a day on this play guide and review and I like the fact that this game is quite open-ended and oh car is 50 percent we've managed to get a driver and the driver in this case manages to drive our beaten up second hand uh wreckmobile and if he drives it 50 percent faster than the other guy then at least that's some good thing so let's get on with that raid and you can see this is a bigger building and you can see that we have somehow been flung out of the car which is parked next to the door and we'll have to remember to get the other guy in there before we leave this mission. So we'll check it out. It's a steel door. And so we can use the drill to get through that. And it's a good job that we bought the drill. 
And I guess that we can quit this and find out what we need to do before we even get the equipment, which would be the wise thing to do. But this is the first time I've played this game. So let's move on through. You can see an A next to something, and that means that that's alarmed. And so hopefully by getting through the steel door, there you go, we can open that. And you can see that if we do break through any of them doors, it's going to be alarmed. It's going to set the alarm off. So what we have to do is, number one, we can check out that cash register. Or number two, we can check out the door to the left-hand side, which doesn't appear to be alarmed. And as we move through to the top, you can see two red boxes at the top. Those are obviously the alarm junctions. One of those is outside the room through that door that we found. And so it means that we can get through that door and disable the alarm system without attracting attention, without triggering the alarm. And I didn't know any of that during this playthrough because I like to play games raw, rough and ready without too much of a knowledge of them. And any advice that I give is usually the advice that I've managed to pick up along the way. It's just meant to be a guide, so of course it's not the best way to play any of these games. And I hope that you can take something away from these. Hopefully how not to play it, and so when you come back to these and try this for yourself, you'll get into this, you'll find the atmosphere of which it starts to build up now that we have alarms. And I'm idiotically trying to break down the door. It looks like we can take 40 seconds with a drill or it looks like we've chosen the long way but opening that steel door we can get through it and that means that by now the alarms are going off it would have been a nice idea looking at this if there was a symbol that said ding dong the alarms are now blaring away there wasn't so you just have to take it as read that they are doing at this point the alarm system is closed so another thing, of course, just like all point-to-click adventures, you have to open and close everything. And it would have been nice just to right-click on things to do that automatically. So we're still trying to check out that alarm. Let's see if we can use any tools on it. And in this case, looking at all the equipment, no, we cannot even use our foot against it to kick that alarm in. Unfortunately. So that's a bit of a waste of time because it means our plan will come to nothing. And... I'm not quite sure what's happening now. I think I'm actually choosing to run that plan again. And I might even choose the other door. And I'm fast forwarding this footage again. And sometimes we have to do that on these play guides. So this kind of game is, like I say, a Marmite game. If you're not actually playing it, then it might look as boring as heck. And if you're not recruiting guys and going through them and trying to get loyalty and all the rest of it, then you're not probably going to see much in this playthrough but you can see that we're now picking up some good equipment some nice watches and some jewelry and i haven't bothered to disconnect the alarm so that means we'll probably get caught after this and that'll be the play guide over so i just like to say thank you very much for watching this i really do hope that it has introduced you to a brand new game for me and it was a pleasure to check this out and obviously check out this game for yourself if you've got the slightest interest in point and clicks which turns into a burglary simulator and another guy mentioned this pretty recently if you check out this game and if you see this on any other review site on youtube check it out and it's in the favorites list of quite a few people Unfortunately, that's our arrest and they got tipped off. How did that happen, I wonder? Well, the alarm went off. And that means that we've been smacked into irons and thrown into that jail. And we won't be doing any more burglaries for quite some time. And at the end of the game, it says, 
During the long time spent in prison, I became aware of the reality of matters of life. I decided to spend the rest of my life in a monastery, and there he is in the monastery. There are a number of endings to the game, quite a large number, and in this case he's found redemption by getting caught before he got in too deep. And that's a great ending to this story, it's a great ending to the review. He was redeemed, hooray! And so, if there are any number of endings to the game, maybe we can be shot to death, that kind of thing. But that's my review of The Clue. And that's the AGA version, there aren't many differences in the games, and there is a special German version as well, if you want this in a special... German language, which I think was released first of all, you can def definitely get this in German. So, thank you. Points don't make prizes. Go on, oh. that looking at. I know it's random. Yeah. Let's whoa. Concentrate on the one, get rid of that. Missed it, missed it. So it can all turn around, we've got the double shot now. And you need just one more letter. I don't think I've seen the shot this go. <laughs> no. Oh shit, you've reached the end of a level boss. Stand Oh, oh my yeah. god! <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> oh, you've reached the boss and now you know about it. Oh, go go oh my god, that's so unfair. <laughs> yeah. But there's a boss every 25 levels, so there's only the one and then it gets back <laughs> to the easy stuff again.